Uh, so today, I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to supercharge transactions in Cardano by taking some research that's been developed over the course of multiple years through our research uh, relationships with Agalush and his team, and actually turning it into a functioning system that is part of the core of Cardano. So uh, input endorsers have been around for about five years. It was introduced uh, in one of the early research uh, papers that we released. And it's going to enable higher transaction throughput and speed to, and lowering our costs while actually expanding our decentralization. So I'm going to show you a little video. It's going to be a little busy, so please give me a moment to kind of describe what's going on here. <clears throat> so this is how we build up the evidence that the solution that was developed through the research effort can actually be implemented in a functioning system. Uh, what you're seeing in the, uh, the very busy diagram here with the circles and lines is a simulation of a global network where the circles are block producers, so our SPOs in the Cardano system. The squares are actually blocks moving through the network. And for those of you that uh, are familiar with Cardano, you know that our block production rate is about one per 20 seconds. And if you notice here, we're going significantly faster. Uh, this uh, traffic pattern is what we're referring to as an input block, which is a new type of block that we're going to introduce into the system. Um, and the forging rate that we're showing here is five per second. So we're significantly faster than uh, what we do today. Uh, these blocks are about 100 kilobytes in size. And we actually have various constraints on this particular uh, simulation that's shown here. So we actually simulate um, network bandwidth and computational delays for actually moving the blocks through the network and validating that they're, uh, they're actually valid blocks. We have various wire protocols that we're simulating here as well so that we can actually work with the internet as opposed to against the internet. And the results, which I'll discuss here in a minute, are, are, are very um, impressive to myself and actually kind of give me a lot of confidence that as we go through the engineering effort that we're going to be able to near these numbers. So let's talk about what the, the charts are here. I, I apologize that they're, they're not all that readable, but the uh, graph right here is the diffusion latency. So in Cardano, you have to diffuse a block across the network in um, the five seconds, right? That's our, that's our delta period over the... Um, and you can see the, the five-second boundary here, even with this much higher traffic rate, is we're actually diffusing to 100% of the blocks, almost all of them within that boundary, right? So we can easily achieve uh, that, that latency that we require. The very active histogram over here shows you how much work is being done. So the different colors, one represents CPU resources, one represents network resources. The constraint on the system is that we can only process 10 blocks per node per second. So we have to limit, you know, actually how much work we can do. But you can see by that histogram that in general, we are staying at about half capacity, right? So we have the ability to actually run the system faster if we need to actually do things like catching up, uh, but we do have some slack there that we, that we can work with at this rate. Uh, the graph shown down here is how good are we relative to perfection. So if we have global knowledge of the system and we know how to distribute the blocks, we're going to consider that perfection. Obviously, in our blockchain system, we don't have that. We have all kind of local information. Uh, what this shows is that we are about 30, 33% behind perfection with this particular model that we've developed uh, using simulations that we've had uh, for multiple years. And then the small little uh, pie over here actually shows activity that's going on in the, in the network. Uh, and so I, I know you can't read this, but this little slice is how much of the network links are inactive. So you know the links are established, but we're not actually using them. The light blue circle, uh, which is about, uh, I don't know, two-thirds or so, that is control messages. So asking, for, knowing about blocks, asking for blocks, things like that. Uh, you'll notice there is a tiny little sliver here. This is a block transmission where we are not getting what we're going to refer to as ballistic transmission, right? where a store and forward happens immediately. That's shown by this blue block. And so if you look very closely at, at the graphic, you'll see little trains of blocks traversing over these, over these links where they follow each other, right? So one block follows the next, follows the next, follows the next. We're avoiding delays that the internet imposes on us by various protocols that have been introduced. 
<clears throat> and so by doing this, we can actually make the blocks move very quickly from the source to throughout the network. <clears throat> so what is we're, this allows us to scale our transactions securely. Uh, Input endorsers is a new extension to Ouroboros. We refer to it as Ouroboros Leos. Uh, it enables more transactions so we can support more demanding applications. Uh, it has opportunities, more opportunities for SBOs to produce blocks. As you saw, there are many more. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, it emphasizes our ability to take academic research that has been gone through a very rigorous process and convert that into a system that we can make live through Cardano. Uh, so what we would like to encourage is participation in the actual Cardano improvement process, which you can uh, access the, the SIP that we've developed through that uh, QR code there, and interacting with our community to help develop this further. Uh, to give you a, a little bit of an idea of why this works and what we're taking advantage of, we're just going to talk a little bit about some inefficiencies that are in, are in blockchains. Uh, so specifically, uh, block diffusion. Right. So when you diffuse blocks through the network, we currently have a limited amount of time by which we need to diffuse it, but we have a much larger amount of time by which it needs to be completed. Right. So if we take five seconds to diffuse over a 20-second time period, we have 15 seconds where we're kind of you know, standing around waiting for the next 20 seconds. So there's a lot of time that we can take advantage of there um, and a lot of idle resources that if we consume, obviously we can get more throughput in the system. <clears throat> in addition to that, it's not just how often we do block diffusion, but actually the resources are underutilized as we do it. So if you look at the initial block forger, that block forger produces it acknowledges to the network that they have a new block, and the rest of the network starts asking for it, and it propagates across the network, node by node by node, until it reaches the end of the network and everybody knows about it. If you look at this, you can see that there is lots of idle time, even during uh, the transmission, and you can also see that the nodes are kind of doing one of two things. They're spending time doing CPU computation, or they're spending time pushing things over the network. Right, so we have even more opportunity there to utilize these resources to gain an advantage uh, in the system. <clears throat> so where are we at today? Uh, our key milestones is that we have a protocol definition that's rigorously defined to help us maintain the chain, manage state, and has various messages that we can validate as they propagate across the network. In addition to that, we've built out a traffic simulation, like what I just showed you. And we're going to continue to build this out to help us get a very strong, solid understanding of the computational and network dependencies and performance that we could potentially expect from an implementation of this system. Uh, as I mentioned, we've published a Cardano improvement proposal that's available today. You can all go download it and read it. And what we hope is that you can comment back and help us produce the best system for the community uh, that we have. So what is ongoing now is community review of that proposal, which I just mentioned, is available to anyone who wants access to it. <clears throat> so why will input endorsers make a difference? Well, more transactions, right? This is a, th a throughput improvement. It allows us to use a lot more resources in the system so we can get more throughput, which allows us to have more transactions. <clears throat> the, the basic fundamentals is input endorsers lever leverages parallelism within the system to create the blocks. So we can create blocks at, uh, using multiple resources. It maintains the same level of security while performing this as everybody's used to with the existing implementation of Ouroboros. And the increased uh, parallelism allows us to use more resources, as I mentioned, to support more transactions. So I'm just going to keep reiterating that, that we're going to use more of the system. That allows us to have more throughput that can benefit all of our users. <clears throat> the, the major change is it's going to be a concurrent blockchain. So how the blocks are produced will be done concurrently throughout the system. And what this allows is this allows us to incorporate new novel technologies into the system, such as potentially prioritization uh, of traffic if, if um, the community would like that to be developed into the system. In addition to that, one other novel element is that it separates smart contract execution from extending the chain. 
So by introducing the level of abstraction that's described in the SIP, we now have the opportunity to validate transactions and execute scripts outside of the critical path of extending the chain and producing new blocks, which can give us an exceptional speed up. Uh, the third main point here is that this is going to be delivered through Cardano. So on top of a rock solid foundation that has gone through academic peer review and is real world tested uh, as many of uh, our users can uh, claim to. <clears throat> so what value does this add to the Cardano ecosystem? It increases their transaction volume in a third generation uh, layer one. Um, I think as potentially questions will come up at here, it definitely described, um, prescribes continued technology advancement because you can imagine, as Charles mentioned, if you start having blockchains that are faster, produce more transactions, you have more resources that you consume and there are other techniques that you need to apply so that you, know, you, don't, you don't cause uh, issues for those that are operating it. Um, it's also a layer one that can support more demanding transactions, right? So now that we will have an underlying system that can consume more transactions at layer one, you can put applications on it that actually need more. <clears throat> and uh, the one other benefit is it's run natively by our existing stake pool operators. So we'll deliver this just like we've delivered Cardano over the course of many years, uh, and you'll see the improvements in the system just by uh, the updates of the protocols. So let me just reiterate some of the main benefits. Uh, so you're going to get more transactions uh, available through the system um, by us using more resources. You're going to be able, you're going to have um, improvements that are delivered to you in the way that you get them delivered today. So they're just going to show up delivered through the SPOs, and so the SPOs can take advantage of that, and so can our users. Uh, it uses improved utilization of resources across the board. So we'll use network resources. Uh, we'll use more of those. we we'll use computational resources. We'll use more of those, which will actually give us a valve where we'll be able to turn the system up to various speeds you know, appropriate to what our community needs. Um, this is most definitely anchored in research, so it's uh, a byproduct of the work that I.O. has done over multiple years, gone through the various rigorous processes to come up with what the solution is and actually develop the SIP. And for those of you that go and look at the SIP, I think you may notice that there are a few authors, some of them are in the room, that can um, help you with, with your understanding. And then the last point I want to make is that we are designing and developing this publicly. So it's open source software, just like IO uh, is well known for, uh, and we are pushing the SIP out to encourage interaction, communication, um, a conversation around what this technology would mean for, for our community. So to participate in this, please you know, be active members of the SIP process. You can gain access to it right there. Uh, in addition to that, some of the authors of the paper are in the room. Feel free to come up, ask us questions. We can do our, our best to answer it. Uh, but we hope that this technology will actually give us a step change in our capability and the ability to handle significantly more throughput in our system by leveraging the academic research that has been done by many members of the community present in, in this room and others. So thank you very much. Uh, I do have a few moments for questions, and then it'll be lunchtime. Yes, hi. Uh, you mentioned in the simulations that you used a uniform stake distribution, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, is anything changing if this uh, initial stake distribution is more skewed? That, um, it's because in reality, it's yep. not as uniform. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the assumption in this particular simulation is a uniform stake distribution. We know in practice that that's not the reality. Um, the efforts that we need to do going forward is we need to make our, our performance simulations more accurate to what the real world is, right? So you can see that this is a flat model, right? It does, it's not, a, not even a globe. Um, in addition to that, while also doing simulations to improve our knowledge of what the performance of the system is going to be, we also have to formalize the protocol so that we can make sure that the elements of the protocol actually meet the properties that we want them to meet. Uh, but yeah, you, you caught one of our assumptions that, that's in this particular model, but we'll continue to, to advance those.
Okay. Thank you all. I look forward to meeting you in the lobby and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>